Hi, my name is Seb Sanford. Come with me today as we paint the Walsh Collars on my guide to animators. Sound running when you're ready. My Guide to Animators is the only video where I give you fantastic information on some of my favorite animators and how their animation is produced. What is animation, you ask? Well, animation is the process of making the illusion of motion and change by means of the rapid display of a sequence of static images that minimally differ from each other. Animators are artists who specialize in the creation of animation. I'll be talking to you about two of my favorite animators and how each of their animation was produced. These animators are worlds apart. One of them is American and the other is British. First, let's talk about the American animator. Not only that, he's also a film director, producer, writer, screenwriter, and chief creative officer of Pixar Animation Studios in California. His name is John Lasseter. Pixar began in 1979 as the graphics group, part of the computer division of Lucasfilm, before it was acquired by Apple Computer co-founder Steve Jobs in 1986. The Walt Disney Company bought Pixar in 2006 at a valuation of $7.4 billion. In 1995, John Lasseter released his first feature-length computer animated movie called Toy Story. The movie won an Academy Award and was nominated for three more. Ah, how do you like that? He forgot us again. <gasps> Freeze! Woody, he's armed! Grab his sword before he kills us all! Buzz, if I take his sword, he'll be naked. Hmm, interesting alloy. You wouldn't happen to have a cousin in Cleveland who's a bowling trophy, would you? The success of the film led Pixar to release a sequel, Toy Story 2, in 1999, following their second CGI production, A Bug's Life, in 1998. When he makes a movie at Pixar or Disney, he always wears a Hawaiian shirt that matches what he does on that day. From then on, John and Pixar went on to make more computer animated movies, which literally became Monsters Incorporated, Finding Nemo, Cars, including its sequel, and 2015's Inside Out, just to name a few. But then, here comes a really good surprise, the next computer animated movie in 2016. 13 years after the release of Finding Nemo, John Lasseter produced and filmed the sequel for the movie, Finding Dory. The movie stars off forgetful fish Dory as she sets out on a journey to find her parents from long ago in the jewel of Moore Bay, California. What tag? Oh, there's a tag on my fin. How 
How could you forget you have a tag on your phone? Oh, no. I'm sorry. I, I suffer from short-term memory loss. Will Finding Dory win the Academy Award in 2017? Will Dory ever find her parents? We'll just have to wait and see. But all I can show you is that I can only show you a very special movie clip which you might find adorable. And here it is. I suffer from short-term memory loss. Yeah! That's exactly what you say. <laughs> okay, okay. We'll pretend to be the other kids now. <clears throat> Hi, Dory! Ahoy there! <laughs> Do you want to play hide-and-seek? Okay. <laughs> we'll hide, and you count and come find us. Okay, Daddy. No, no, not Daddy. I'm the nice fish who wants to be your friend. Okay? Okay, Daddy. No. I'm hiding! Now count to ten. One, two, three, um, four, I'd like sand. Sand is squishy. So this is how they produce the animation in John Lasseter's movies in Pixar Animation Studios. The process of Pixar's animation is long and complex. A typical Pixar animation takes four to five years to complete. Pixar's filmmaking process is a design process, alternating intonations of planning and implementation, all centered on storytelling. And we call this 3D animation. Okay, so now that I told you about John Lasseter, I now wanted to tell you about the British animator now. This man came up with the idea of Wallace and Gromit and he also works at Armin Animation Studios in Bristol. We're talking about Nick Park, a young British artist and film animator. I can never remember where the characters actually came from. Um, I can go back to old sketchbooks and, and look, look where they come. You know, I have this stack of sketchbooks at home which uh, has all these uh, sort of germs of ideas. Certainly, yeah, Wallace and Gromit started in these, in, in these old sketchbooks. Nick Park started doing early sketches for Wallace and Gromit, and they became real plasticine figures. While Nick was a film student, he had the idea to launch their careers after the first screen tests of the characters. He called it a grand day out. The movie had taken a very long time to make. After two years, Nick had filmed only about 10 minutes animating every frame himself. Then he met up with Armin Animations in Bristol. Nick Park needed a job, Artman needed an animator, and they offered to finish a grand day out while Nick worked on other projects. Then in 1989, Nick Park worked on Creature Comforts, part of an Artman animated series where real people's voices were brought to life by animated characters. Well, um, most of the cages are a bit small and and either grotty and everything, but the turpins seem to get a good side. They've got a they've got a big waterfall and big pools to play around in. There's lots of them there. They looked really happy. Yeah, well, it's reasonably comfortable, I suppose. There's space, but uh, uh, I mean, I've been in more comfortable rooms. Yes. And suddenly, this cat just leapt off the screen. It's like the voice, the articulation, the gestures, everything fitted. And I thought, my God, this is just extraordinary. What has Nick created this Jaguar doing space? I want space! Where I would like to live and to spend most of my life? In a hot country! You know, in a hot country that I have a good weather and that I have space, that I have trees, you know? That I don't have only grass with pollens that give me hay fever every day. This time, Nick and the team from Ardman worked to finish a grand day out. In the end, the movie took six years to make. It was finally shown on British television in 1989. To everyone's amazement, both Creature Comforts and The Grand Day Out were nominated for an Oscar for Best Animated Movie in 1990. And the winner was Creature Comforts. But sadly, Wallace and Gromit didn't win. In 1993, Wallace and Gromit were back in the, in the wrong trousers, and it was released as their second 30-minute animated film. And it won the Academy Award for Best Animated Film in 1994. Then in 1995, 
they were back in a close shave with more characters and more story and an unlikely hero named Sean. But the thing that didn't change the movie was, a was the success for one yet another Academy Award in 1996 for animated film. Then in 2005 and 2008, The Curse of the Wet Rabbit and A Matter of Love and Death were released in one in a full-length animated film and then half an hour as seen on TV. And then, and then they got famous in other countries, in Japan, for example. But I think, I think the people around the other countries like the short films for some of the reason, actually. But and then it was, and then the Walls of Gromit movies were translated into almost twenty languages. Gromit, mm. The single most successful and still growing territory outside the UK at the moment is Japan, where. Um, the characters have been totally, totally embraced. クラッカーはなんか c'est la tête des personnages qui est, qui est bien faite et au niveau des, des faciès, des mimiques, euh, c'est surtout ça qui fait rire je pense. Avec aussi alors, bien sûr le, tout ce qui est le, qui est le parler mais euh, c'est dans la gestuelle, hein. c'est surtout dans la gestuelle. L'apparence surtout, c'est pas tous les jours qu'on voit de la pâte à modeler bouger et parler euh, dans un langage bizarre mais c'est amusant. Hein. Je suis sûr que tu trouveras ce cadeau parfaitement adapté à notre façon moderne de vivre. C'est le pantalon électronique de la NASA. Fantastique pour les promenades. Don't, you don't think when you're watching them, oh look at those puppets. You, like, the way they act is very human, so they've been, because they've been done really well. I think you'll see one level if you're a child and you'll see another level if you're an adult. One of the things that surprised everybody was just how broad the age appeal was. People from all ages loved the films, loved the characters. In 2006, Armin and Nick Park even did an animated movie that was made without using a single piece of plasticine. It was an animated film called Flushed Away, and the same thing happened for Arthur Christmas in the Christmas of 2011. So, how is the animation used in Nick Park's movies? at Armin Animation. Well, let me describe it to you in features. Um, one, you must make clay models of, your, of the main characters in that movie at Armin. I use some kind of metal thing in which you can move the arms and legs around. And then, using a, any kind of camera actually, you take a picture and then you move different parts of the main character's body one tiny move at a time. And then you take the next photo, and it goes on and on and on for about three or four years to make the movie. And that's when you have to complete the final footage of that Ottoman animation movie. And we call this claymation, or stop motion animation. So, what's next for Nick Park and Ottoman animation? Where do they go next? Well, <sighs> 200,000 years in the making, of course. Do you want to know what the name of the movie is? Well, here's a little clip to show you. <laughs> huh? Only Man is due to be released in January 2018 in the UK. And the movie is set at the dawn of time when dinosaurs and woolly mammoths roam the earth and tells the story of how one plucky caveman unites his tribe against a mighty enemy and saves the day. Well, I think I've run out of space for this first part of the Guide to Animators. Well, now that we covered the information on John Lasso and Nick Park and her work at the different animation studios, I think next time I'll talk to you about the influence between the two animators and how the animation is produced. Like, I need to find
find some more information on that. Anyways, that's the first part of my guide to animators, and I'll see you in the second part where I'll talk to you about the influence of John Lasseter and Nick Park.